Thank you so much for coming and joining us today at First United Methodist Church in Madisonville. We are so honored to host the Hawassi District's annual meeting and we're glad that we can meet together in person. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to see you all. Thank you all so much for coming. I hope you all had a chance to enjoy some refreshments that our ladies have prepared for you. And as you leave this place, um, if you haven't already, there are some little gift bags on the table outside the sanctuary doors for each of you to take with you with a few little things that uh, our unit has prepared for you. Um, glad to introduce you now our new pastor who we already love very much, Reverend Chris Black. He's going to pray us in. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm so sorry that y'all had to wait for just a minute. Uh, we had a little plumbing issue, which we had to solve. Um, and that's kind of other, has other duties assigned for, for me, I guess. But we dealt with it, and it's all good. Um, I'm so glad that you all are here today. Um, I'm a cradle Methodist. I grew up that way. My grandmother was a part of UMW. I know how powerful you all can be within a district, within a congregation, and how missional, how important your all's mission is to push the church forward in making disciples for Jesus Christ. And so I'm thankful for you, thankful for the opportunity to be here with you all. Uh, let's pray together. Lord God, thank you for this gathering, uh, for each person in this room, for their heart, for their relationship with you, and for their local church. Uh, I pray, Lord God, that, that this gathering today would inspire us anew uh, as your followers. And I pray that your spirit would guide the discussion today, that you would be among us and in our hearts and in our minds and in our conversations as we connect together uh, as Methodists. We praise your name and thank you for the opportunity to be together. It's in your son's holy name that we pray. Amen. So we are going to convene the third annual Hiawassee meeting. <laughs> Is that good? I've had this in my house for a year and I couldn't wait to use it. Okay. So if you want to turn to your the back of the front cover, we will uh, would you care to stand? Since there's a little asterisk there, it says please stand. You will repeat the United Methodist Women's Purpose. The United Methodist Women shall be a community of women whose purpose is to know God and to experience freedom as all persons through Jesus Christ, to develop a creative, supportive fellowship, and to expand concepts of mission through participation in the global ministries of the Mother Church. Thank you. You may be seated. And if Pat Ricketts would come up and do our prayer calendar, you will find that on the same page. Birthdays today are Molly King, and she's a dentist in Helena, Montana, and Liz Porter the second, the commissioner in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And the mission focus today is uh, United Community Center in Fort Worth, Texas. Now, if um, Kathy Austin would come, we'll do the roll call in the minutes. Yes, thank you. If you would just please stand if you are from each church, as I say the name of the church that we have listed for our district currently. Um, Alan Memorial. I, and if you would just hold up your 
fingers, please. Just let me know how many. Benton. Any for Benton? Okay, Big Spring. Okay. Uh, Buckner Memorial slash Porter. Okay. Inglewood. First Cleveland. Okay. First Copper Hill. Okay. Thank you. First Dayton. One last time. First Madisonville. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do we have any that are out? Well, it has been 10, 11, 12, 13 counting the men? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Key. Three, four, five. Okay. Now I have luminary here, but I don't have them as having any members right now. Mars Hill? Okay. Uh, Max County Parish? Okay. Okay. Nyota? Uruwa. Six, six, okay, Spring City. Okay, thank you. Tasso. Okay, thank you. Trinity. Athens. Okay, and Wesley Memorial from Etwa. Five, okay. Are there any units that are represented that I failed to say your name. For any guests, who we have, maybe it's just a guest, no, not a unit. Hi, Brittany. <laughs> One of yours is a guest, so I can say we have two guests. Okay? And you will find the copy of the minutes. I'm not going to read it to you. For one, I just got my voice back, actually, a few days ago. So I'm not going to push it, but you'll see that behind the program agenda, records report, and then there's a secretary report. And if you notice anything that is um, incorrect or missing, please let me know. That was the one that was the Zoom meeting. So, if you notice anything, just let me know, and I will change it for the record. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Kat. So now it's Rebecca Penny's chance. She will be honoring the five star women, presentation of the budget, which we just gave you, then we'll be going on. And I wish I could say I was perfect, but I am not. There's a couple <laughs> of things I forgot to do, and I'll we'll get to those in just a minute. But let's go ahead and honor the the five star units. Because these are the units that gave to all five areas of giving, and uh, last year was a challenge, so I am so appreciative of the ones that did, uh, did do this. And my first mistake, I left off Tasso from this group, so I will give your certificate to you later, and uh, because we will definitely want to recognize everyone. So as I call your name, someone will come and get your certificate. First United Methodist Madisonville. You'll just tell me your name. I'll meet you halfway. Because I need steps on my Fitbit. <laughs> Keith Appreciate Memorial. It. Spring City. Big Spring. And Wesley Memorial. So thank you, thank you, thank you for doing uh, that for us. And then I'll move on to my second mistake. <sighs> it's hard to say that I made a mistake. Uh, on the page where it says the five star units, you can read who got honored and who honored them. And I left off Tasso again. And Janet is gonna she's gonna strike me from her Facebook if I don't do better. But it's Lou Kane that was honored and Tasso United Methodist Women honored her so we and her name, that would be great. And so you still have time this year to honor women, so get, get busy. I've had three or four this year, so we've gone down just a little bit, but everybody can do their part and honor someone who's 
maybe stepped up a little bit this year. Uh, the next thing up on our agenda is the budget. And uh, that was inadvertently left out of our program book, but you have a copy in your hand. <laughs> All right, so if you look at the very last time it says revised budget, that's the budget that we voted on in uh, our district executive meeting and the conference has approved that. So, yes, uh, do I have a vote on the floor to accept the budget? Do I have a second? I thank you, Donna. So Barbara Graham and Donna is there. And the budget has been approved. Oh, okay. Then do I have, uh, everyone has to vote. So if you vote yes to the budget, raise your hand, please. Does your hand, any nays, no? Okay, thank you. The budget has been approved. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, on to, I forgot to get volunteers to take up our offering. So, if I could just have a couple of people to step forward, thank you. And thank you. Thanks for bearing with me today. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. My daddy told me once there are no perfect people. Only Jesus and God are perfect. So it takes all kinds to make a, a, this program work. So now it is time for the Remembrance Service by Pat Ricketts.
Hilda Bailey. Uh, Hilda was a well-loved member of our United Women and had been uh, kind of an invalid the last few years before her death. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sure she was an awesome woman. <laughs> she was. <laughs> okay, and uh, we had something different this time. We had two two ministers that died from Dayton this year. And uh, they were both wonderful. Uh, the first one, Reverend Willard Bill Akers the third. He really um, he liked the United Methodist women. He had a sister home type, one type from a meeting just before he became ill. And then we had uh, Reverend Kenneth Pierce. Uh, Ken and his family were wonderful musicians. And he provided the music at our 2019 annual meeting. He was such a, a hard worker during the pandemic. He had something on there once or twice a week. Just a lot. Uh, First United Methodist Church in Madisonville. And that was Joyce Turner. Joyce was a member of this church long before I ever got here. She was faithful in our morning circle. She was uh, very active all around the church. She helped with youth. She helped with children. She truly embodied the UMW purpose of um, women, children, and youth. She was a handy, Worker. She did needlepoint crafts and things like that. And, and there are touches of Joyce all around this church. And, and she moved away shortly before her death. And we, we, we truly miss her. Thank you. Keep it moral. Sweet Pea. 
but she was one woman who totally would give her heart to anyone who needed a hand. Or she is well missed.60 years, and she was there before they <laughs> They passed out her face, and when she was well loved, they passed off.
So she's going to serve as um, spiritual growth for Sitting Sound. I'm jealous. But we have a good spiritual growth person in Janet Bacon, and we're excited to have her come along. Um, and nominations committee is Janet, and has been Janet, but she's going off. Janie Gollins is going off, and Anna Underdown is going off from that. So um, we will, I think we need one more at least nominations person. All right. Uh, don't know. Good question. Susan Maddox, are you staying? You are staying on with us. You just got to praise the Lord for that one. Thank you so much. All right. Um, if you would vote, please, on the people that I said, uh, mentioned as um, uh, proposed officers and not staying on as nominations, Chair. I forgot to mention that. Anyway, uh, Audra Bidwell. Kathy Austin, Becca Penny, uh, Janet Bacon, and Underdown may or may not be, uh, Lisa Parker, Laura Grindstaff, and Cindy Campbell. Those are all new people. If you would raise your hand, if you agree with those mentioned, oh. all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Janet Portman. <laughs> <laughs> all right, jump up and down. Uh, was there any anybody else that wanted to be nominated or wanted to nominate anybody? I forgot to do that. That was my fault. Well, do we need nomination folks, ladies? Yes, we do need a couple people. So, so if you know of anybody, please let Barbara Graham or I know. Please. So everyone voted in the affirmative. So you all are elected. Thank you. Um, so now we are going to um, do the special recognitions for officers that are leaving us. We have two officers leaving, but they're going to other positions. But if um, Pat, Trisha, Pat Ricketts, Janet Bacon, and Janie Goins would please come forward. These are our outgoing officers. In those positions, I know two of them are coming back. Oops. And wait, are you coming back? No. Okay, it's so only one of us coming back. And Janet, I'm going to be Yes, we have to Lisa too. She was doing the oh. and the other. The social action. So we need a social action. And I. She's not leaving. She's not leaving. It's fine. Um, yes, Lisa. Oh, Sharon is leaving. She's switching to nomination. Oh, Sharon is switching to nomination? Oh, okay. We forgot that one. Hey, this is our first live meeting in two years, so. <laughs> Sharon in on nominations. She's leaving program resources and going to nominations. And then um, we need to vote Lisa Parker in. So all in favor of those two continuing, raise your hand. All in favor, no. All in favor. Uh, we got you. If you oppose, raise your hand. Thank you. Um, and Lisa Parker is leaving social action, so now we not necessarily only need. Oh, that's right. I'm, I'm, yes, we do. Cindy Campbell. Yes. So now, all right. Let me get on. Well, we got all do that. Huh? Um, I guess I should introduce our lovely young Brittany Eastridge, who made be a liar today because I said she goes everywhere with those beautiful girls and they're not here. But she arrived and she is going to be doing our installation of officers. And she is from Chattanooga. Um, she is a long time, I don't know how old she is, but I've known her for a long time and she's been right at every single meeting with those two beautiful girls and a grandma of the girls. 
but uh, let's welcome Brittany Eastridge. And you are, um, remind me what you are again on conference level? Social action, okay. So she is gonna come up and install officers. And you have
because you must keep with honesty and truthfulness a record of the finances of the district and set your sights on guiding members to carefully consider mission opportunities and obligations. Um, communication coordinator is supposed to be black and white and red all over. <laughs> because you have the responsibility of keeping all the members up to date on everything that's going on. Telling others our story, publicizing programs, activities, and now that's taken many forms and uses lots of colors. The communications coordinator. Mission coordinator for spiritual growth is supposed to have a golden flower. I'm sorry, we have to really use our imaginations. To signify the golden hour spent in prayer and Bible study, as you find ways to affirm the worth of each person and seek to provide opportunities for women to realize personal growth <coughs> and spiritual renewal, as you strengthen each phase of our work. Social action coordinator is supposed to have yellow because it adds a splash of brightness. Their task is to bring the district information on social, economic, and political issues that affect God's children here and around the world. E&I is supposed to have pink. Not because you'll spend the year looking at your work through rose-colored glasses, but to represent the pink glow of satisfaction that comes as you see women grow upon completion of mission studies and educational opportunities. MNO. The strong, vigorous color of red represents the many hats you will wear in your job. Red is a warm color signifying the warmth of your spirit as you guide, encourage, and lead women in new ventures, both in the local churches and communities, remembering that helping others is the heart of the work of our unit. Program resources. She's supposed to have white as a reminder in the background of a printed page. She'll search for new materials to encourage members to participate in a reading program that all women may become better informed. And nominations are supposed to have silver because it's notes of harmony as they actively work towards securing leadership to give guidance and leadership through the year. To all the officers, will you carry out your duties to the best of your ability? If so, answer, I will with God's help. To the members of this district, will you support these officers in the coming year? If so, answer, I will with God's help. These colorful flowers truly remind us of the rainbow and God's promises. I'm sorry they're not the perfect colors. It reminds us, too, of the promise that Jesus made when he said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. May God's presence be real to you as you serve the Creator well, as part of the leadership of this district, using it in your year, throughout your life. And we're supposed to sing, Blessed be the tie that binds, but we're not singing right so I had it if it worked. There you go.
Speaker. message at Udawa, she's our associate pastor, um, after her first message I said, hey, you're going to get these up Methodists up out of their seats, and she does it. <laughs> Welcome, please, <laughs> Dr. Reverend Dr. Jacqueline. God, Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. What a blessed time to be here. I thank my dear sweet Barbara for all those kind, kind words. So don't catch me early in the morning because I'm not a morning person. <laughs> you might say, now I'm not sure Barbara was right about some of that. <laughs> but I am grateful and I'm thankful and I appreciate being asked to come and bring a word uh, to the great women of God here today. Uh, I want to also thank my husband who drove me and everything because I don't, since I don't navigate mornings in the best of ways, uh, he was kind enough to drive me up last night and then drive me on over this morning. So God bless you for always being there and supporting me. I, I appreciate that uh, and I don't take it for granted. Um, before we begin, if we will go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, please, please bring us together in such a way as to bring honor and glory to you. Help us to dwell together in unity and work to make our churches, communities, and world a better place for all people. Please give us a sense of oneness so we can move to greater heights and deeper depths in you. Help us all to operate in the gifts you have provided us and walk in the calling you have placed upon us. Help us to bring forth our gifts and talents to strengthen this organization and to do the work needed to serve others. Please let our shared purpose and mission be our God and our life. Let those things that bring us together be greater and more magnified than those things that separate us and break us apart. Lord, although we might not always agree, let us to, and help us to always be agreeable in the matters relating to you and to your kingdom. Just as you have created a beautiful and diverse world and called it good, help us to see how good and wonderful uniqueness and differences really are. Teach us to appreciate and celebrate the beauty of diversity for the blessing and wonderful gift it is to us and to the whole wide world. Now, Lord, please speak 
to us today. Let your words touch our hearts and minds in such a way to bring us together and find a greater sense of you in unity. In the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from Ephesians 4, which is the main part, but I decided that I, as I was looking through this, I kind of wanted to do this whole little part as we began to talk. So uh, we will read <laughs> 1 through 6. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, Bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God, Father of all, who is above all through all, and in all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. The book of Ephesians is an epistle or letter written by the Apostle Paul to encourage and strengthen the church of Ephesus. Paul is not addressing any problems with this church. Unlike the Corinthians, the Ephesians are strong and pretty solid in their faith. So Paul is teaching basic Christian principles. And he wanted them to have strong faith. So he wanted them to understand what the church really was based upon. The things that the church should follow and exhibit as followers of Christ. Having lived in Ephesus for three years and shepherded the believers there, Paul was aware of the challenges and the cultural pressures these believers were facing and wanted to give them information and tools to keep them in the way. Now this church, uh, this city, was the capital city of the Roman province of Asia. Now today, if you were to go find this particular city, you would have to look in Turkey, our modern day Turkey. It was a, a metropolis with about 250,000 people. Now that was quite huge for its day. It was a booming port city with multi-ethnic groups and, and lots of diversity. See, people came from all over to buy and sell and trade goods there, thus creating a very cosmopolitan type area. Now this is not some dusty old little town. Now, this is a big, wealthy city with underground sewage during this ancient time. I mean, they had many large houses, many of them 10,000 square feet. Now, we're talking about opulence and plush. This was a very fine place to live. I see why uh, Paul stayed so long. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was the L.A. or San Francisco or New York of its day. A big city where everyone was allowed to live as they saw fit. No one God was better than the other, even though there were many. Everyone could worship their own respected God, and it was no problem. Actually, Ephesus was quite a progressive city when you look at it from that perspective. Just as L.A. has the Hollywood sign and San Francisco has the Golden Gate Bridge, as New York has the Statue of Liberty, Ephesus sported one of the seven wonders of the world, the Temple of Artemis. Now, the, God, the Artemis was the goddess of the moon, and she had a grand and beautiful temple made to her. She was a goddess. So, you know, not only was this, this was a great city, but it actually had a bit of a feminine, uh, or uh, how we say, feminism as part of its 
undergirding because they worship a goddess. And so it was grand. So people came from all over to worship at the temple. Many artisans would, would make statues of the goddess. And, and while they were there, they, some would make coins with her picture on the, or with her image on the front. And then they sold them at the temple for the worshipers. Now this was a lucrative business until Paul came along. Yeah, he started messing with them. See, this teaching of Christianity, this radical idea of one God started spreading like wildfire. Paul's teaching about Jesus Christ produced so many converts in this particular city that it started cutting into the artisan's business. Now, those of us in America know what happens when you start cutting into people's business. <laughs> now, you mess with the pharmaceutical company and you're going to give them something, something, ain't you? Well, this was Paul's situation. He started messing with people's business. The growth of, the growth of Christianity was increasing thus decreasing the number of artist worshipers, and thus upsetting the whole economic balance of this very wealthy city. Now this troubled the workers who were affected by the economic shift, and a man named Demetrius started a riot. He started chanting, Artemis is the best God, because that's what he worshiped. She, she the best God. You want to talk about your God is the only one. Hey, Artemis good too. <laughs> now this situation sent Paul back because there was a riot. They were going to get Paul because he was messing up stuff that, you know, in this city. And so he said, well, I guess I better go. It's time to get out. <laughs> so he left the city and he actually never returned. Now we'll see John going to Ephesus, but Paul never returned. So here in chapter 4, Paul is writing from a Roman prison. See, uh, the thing with talking this kind of talk that he was talking, it was just bad business. It was treasonous in some areas. And so he lands in a Roman prison. He begins with this statement, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, Paul makes a, a, a statement right there. He makes an appeal to the Jewish and Gentiles. And he's, he's saying to these people who have accepted Christ to walk or to live in a way worthy of the calling to which they have been called. Paul is warning them. He says, now don't get caught up in this cultural stuff. Don't get caught up in these societal traps that are available to you in this great city. Because all of everything you ever wanted is all around you. But Paul says, to live as Christ lived, with humility, gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond. See, Paul stressed the importance of keeping unity among this newly united Jewish and Gentile. Christian church. Now, when we say church in that ancient time, we're not talking about everybody coming to, to Madisonville, UNC. No, we were talking about a people scattered all over the place. And sometimes they may come together in, in a house or something like that, but it wasn't this church as we know it. But he needed to keep them focused on the shared mission and the shared vision to maintain unity among the people. See, here Paul is dealing with both ethics and theology. He is stating uh, very clearly what a mature and ethical Christian life should look like. As a mature Christian, there are some things we ought to be able to do. As an ethical Christian, there's some things we ought to be able to do. There's some ways we ought to look. There's some ways we ought to act. And Paul wanted to bring those things out. And he explained to them how the theological basis for 
of this type of living was at the very core of our beliefs. See, Ephesians 4 and the verses uh, 4 through 6 state that the, the very core of what we believe as Christians today even. And it's very succinct in the same because it reads, there is one body, one church. Might be a whole bunch of folk, but there's one church. And one spirit, and that is the Holy Spirit. And just as we're called to that one hope, and our one hope is Jesus Christ. I heard a song say, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. See, of your calling. See, we call, we're all called. And our greatest commandment, greatest thing that we have to do, we're called to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, with all of who we are, with all our talents. And we're called to love our neighbor as ourselves. Now that's a grand calling and obviously one of the hardest things that we can ever do. Because we seldom get that particular One Lord, one faith, one baptism. He was basically saying all this multi, all these multi-gods, all of this polytheism. No, nah, we're not doing that. We're one. <laughs> now, at the same time in this same scripture, he does actually promote diversity. Diversity of talents. Diversity of gifts, bringing those things that God has blessed you with to the, to the forefront for the upbuilding and uplifting and strengthening of the one church. One God. See, one God, that was new, that was new, because we already talking about polytheism here, but one God, and that one God being Yahweh God, Man, he was really ruffling some people's feathers. Because he uh, then he turns around and said, Father of all. You in the city of Artemis. She's a goddess, and now you're talking about Father of us all. The Elohim, the creator God that created all of us, who is above all. You just put God above Artemis. Through all and in all. So now we're looking at one God, Yahweh, who is over everything, who is supreme, who is sovereign. And oh man. Here Paul is making quite a bold statement. He's changing the whole world view. Here in this polytheistic world, where everybody basically respects everyone else's God, and Artemis is the goddess, he's saying Yahweh is supreme. That the way of Christ is the only way. And Christians, both Jews and Jew Gentiles, together make up one body of Christ. Hmm. This was some crazy thinking. This was treason. And, and everybody was like, uh-uh, he's got to get up out of here. This makes no sense. This is totally against what we believe as a society. But it's here where we learn that the unity of the church is based on what we now call the Holy Trinity. Because Paul just introduced us to it. The Father. And the blessed Holy Spirit. Paul was telling them, leave behind those gods and idols they once served. Cling to the one true God. He was saying, this culture and the ways of your society will pull you away and entice you to do some things that you would normally do. But you need to stay in the way of Christ. You see, old ways and old thinking wanted to set these people at odds with one another. But Paul was saying, 
Let's all live harmoniously, serving the one true God and, and sharing the same message of Jesus the Christ for the same mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ so they can change the world. Does that sound familiar to you? It should. Because still today we're doing the same work, facing the same challenges. The culture and society is always telling us we should be at odds with each other. We should be killing and fighting each other because of our history, because of our racial differences, because of our economic differences, because of cultural differences. But Paul here in Ephesians 4 is telling us once we have accepted Jesus, we are all one body. I tell Uwa all the time, we are blood kin. Because we're kin from the blood of Jesus Christ. And but Paul is saying, we're all sisters and brothers in Christ. We must work together to change our world. There's no difference when we're in Christ. We're all working for the same mission, the same purpose. We're all one church. And as United Methodists, so you get that united Methodist women. We are focused on the ministries with women and children and youth. We work for justice through service and advocacy. And y'all just read your mission and you read your purpose. Our very purpose is to be a community of women who know God, who develop a creative and supportive fellowship, who support the mission of the organization. I mean, we're here by nature to help women and children to grow spiritually, to equip them for leadership, to provide the transformative education experiences, to alleviate suffering in our world. So let us be truly united for this common mission. This is a great purpose. This is a great mission. Let us strive for unity to support our common purpose. See, women in leadership is still some crazy, radical idea for many people in this world today. In certain countries, even the thought of women in leadership can get you killed for saying it. And I ain't gonna lie, in some United Methodist churches, ah, you can get put out <laughs> just because you're a woman preacher. Now, we hate to say that, but it is true, and so we have to uh, stand and say what is true. But we, as United Methodist women who support women, who support children, who support these things, we need to stand and say no more of this. Because we are one. Just as God can call a man or a mule, God can call a woman. Lord have mercy. <laughs> We're all called to do the will of God. For the one church, for the one Lord, for the one baptism, for the one faith. For one. God's not looking and saying, well, she's a woman. I ain't going to use her today. <laughs> no, God is saying, hey, you got a call on your life. Do something. For the upbuilding of the kingdom. Join me in the work that I'm doing here. You see, unity is a product of serving together in peace, teaching each other, and encouraging each other. But what does it mean to encourage one another? According to Ephesians 4 and 29, to encourage one another is to let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth. Woo, for women, that's hard sometimes. <laughs> those 
Holy Spirit. Our job is to glorify God. According to Romans 15 and 6, that's our job. So if what you are saying or what you are thinking or what you are doing does not glorify God, if it will not bring grace to those who give it, it is best you do not say that thing. It is best that you do not share that thought. Just keep that one to yourself. Because we're not here to tear down. We're here to build up. Unity is needed for our very survival. If folks see a divided, united Methodist women, they don't want to be a part of that. They can find that out in the world. Division and, and quarreling and fighting and carrying on. Oh, there are plenty of that. But unity, working together in peace, oh, that's a novelty. And people are looking for that. See, united we stand. Divided we fall. Because no house divided against the can stand. So unity brings stability and peace, which allows strength, growth, and progress. If we want to continue as a strong group in the church, it will take positive attitudes and collaborative work toward a common goal for the common good of all. All means they don't all look like you. They don't all act like you. They don't all talk like you. But our job is to do the work for all. All might mean they're sitting on your borders. All might mean they might be sitting out in, in the ocean waiting to get up in here. But it's still all. That's what the word of God says. Either we're going to believe some of it or we're going to believe all of it. All is all. So to gain and maintain unity, we must do several things. Number one, be prayerful. Seek God's guidance in every decision. God is already at work. We're just trying to join the work that's already in progress. So we need to ask God, well, what are we doing today? Two, remember our call and the one who called us. We're not here for ourselves. We're not here for show and pompous and circumstance. We're here for the one who called us. We represent the one who called us. So represent God well. If that be a number three, represent God well. Let people, when you walk out of here, they automatically say, now there goes a woman of God. Let the devil, when you wake up in the morning, the devil gets scared because they know you're going to get out here and do some great work for the kingdom of God. I want them to be able to say, oh Lord, Jackie done got up. <laughs> it's going to be a tough day. I want them to be able to say for you, those United Methodist women done got up. And they're mature Christians and they're living a life worthy of their calling and I got to get on my business because they about to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. They about to change the world. That's what people need to be saying about us. And finally, accept one another just as Christ accepted you. Because the United Methodist women, we are all over the world. All over the world. Accept one another. Just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. That's 
That's what Romans 15 says, that when we accept one another, just as Christ accepted you, we bring praise, hallelujah, to God. Walk in your calling. Walk worthy. Bring praise and glory to God in all that you do. Precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Jack. <laughs> I work with three year olds, so I know uh, that was absolutely outstanding. Thank you so much. And Lisa Whitlock, we need to sign her up next year for. Years in advance when you got powerful words like that. So, um, looking on our information as far as what church is next, I noticed that it was Utawa. Um, we haven't had verification, but hopefully next year we can meet the first Saturday in November in Utawa. Barbara's going to check on it and let me know. Um, but as far as our meeting is concerned, I, oh yes, yes, Larry. I'd just like to let everyone know that a recording of this meeting will be available on our church website, okay. www.1umcm.com. We are live streaming now, and there's a recording will be up on the web website. Now, what is the number one, not the winning one? UMCM.com. Okay. First UMC Madisonville. Thank you very much. And thank you, Richard. And check out the book table where Sharon Franklin will be out there. There's paperwork that you can pick up. Uh, if you haven't picked up your, um, yeah, your goodie bag, there's still goodie bags out there, and your handbook for the next few years is out there also. Is there anything else anyone wants to add? And I want to thank my team. Uh, just like Dr. Or Pastor Jack said, without her husband, she can't do that. Wonderful speaking she does. Without my team, our team, your team, we couldn't have done this meeting. And I want to thank you and I apologize for the errors, but like I said, no one is perfect. And I want to just use my little gavel again and say, the meeting has been adjourned. Be safe, go with God, and let people know that you are truly a woman of God. Thank you. Please get more food. Oh, get more food.